All right. We have uh, we have a couple of things to discuss today. Couple of things. There was only like this was honestly relatively to the rest of One Piece. This is probably the most boring chapter in the entire series, to be honest with you. I mean, like, I, I don't know what Oda's doing here. I mean, we could be focusing on Gaimon right now. We could be focusing on Foxy right now. But for whatever reason, Oda decided to focus on, like, the Gorosei and, like, these transformations. I, I honestly have no idea what's going through that man's head right now. This is not the stuff we want to see in our One Piece. I saw somebody, look, there's a, there's dinosaur emojis in the chat. That clearly means we should be focusing on Drake right now. That is what the people want. Drake should be the main character of One Piece right now. I don't even know what he's doing with the Straw Hats. The second Drake showed up back at Sab Odie, Oda should have killed off the Straw Hats right then and there. He was about to do it. You know he was. And then the main character could have been Drake, and we could have had a fantastic marine adventure with Drake. Uh, oh, dude. Drake is drowning in want. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Drake just wants to matter so bad. He's like, guys, I'm a secret agent for the Marines. I could turn into a dinosaur, statistically speaking. I should be the coolest character in this story. Yeah, but you're not. Sorry, Drake. Sorry, Drake. You even when you got you got a finishing blow on one of the cipher pole agents, and even with the finishing blow, you still couldn't kill one. Ah, oh, man. If Drake would have dealt with Joseph, was his name Joseph or, or Guernica? That was his name. If Drake would have finished the deal with Guernica, then he wouldn't have interrupted the fight with Kaido and Luffy. And then Luffy would have just died, would not win of gear fifth, probably. And then Kaido and Drake could have went on an adventure. I don't know. <laughs> oh, poor Drake. Mm. So we were playing D&D &D at my place a couple days ago. And uh, my one friend's playing a druid, and he got to uh, level 7, which I think you can start transforming into CR2 creatures at, at level 7 with your uh, wild shape. So we're going through all these CR2 creatures, or beasts, and uh, there's dinosaurs on there, and Allosaur is a CR2. And my friend Pimmer reads One Piece, and I'm just like, hey, look, Allosaur, CR2. It's like Drake. Drake really sucks. He's only a CR2 creature. <laughs> And we just kind of shit on Drake for a little while there. Oh, man. Okay, if it's a choice between Hawkins or Drake, honestly, yeah, I guess I would have Drake show back up. Because Hawkins is... I had high hopes for Hawkins, but yeah, he just... I don't know. I don't know, man. Anyway, happy St. Patrick's Day, by the way, too. Everybody hope... Everybody's wearing green. All right. If you're not wearing green, just pinch yourself right now. I'm not there, so you're going to have to pinch yourself. So we all agree Jew Peter isn't dead, right? Well, of course he isn't. Why would you think he's dead? They could clearly regenerate. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, that's about as good of a place to start as any. I mean, might as well, right? I mean, that's the first, uh, one of the first Super Chats. Might as well talk about Saint Shepherd Jew Peter. All right? So, um... You know what's fascinating is this guy is different from the rest of the Gorosei in a number of different ways. Number one, he's always looked the youngest. Out of all of the Gorosei, we have some images here. Like, all the Gorosei hanging out here, right? You know, all of them are old dudes, graying hair, white hair. You know, Samurai Gandhi back there has got no hair. And then you just have Shepard, who looks the youngest, which I think would be rather fascinating if he was the oldest one. If we're going along with the logic, and, and I, I want to reiterate here, this is my headcanon. They might not all have been recruited at different times. They might have been all recruited at once. They might have been there before Eam was there, for all we know. I have no idea. But I'm going with the logic that Eam was first and then recruited the other ones throughout the centuries. It would be really funny if he was the oldest and he looks the youngest. This guy might have been Eames, like, assistant. It might have been Eames butler back in, like, the Void Century or whatever and his, like, personal assistant. And then, like, okay, well, if I'm an immortal being that's going to rule the world, I will take you with me, Peter. And then Peter's like, yeah, all right. 
And then uh, they transform. And whenever you get transformed into an immortal being, you stay the age whenever you were turned. Okay, so if Peter was like age 45 when he was transformed, he just stays 45 forever until he dies. Um, how sure are you about the numbers on the circles? Because I can't tell which panels should I look at. Yeah, they're there. They're 100% there. They're absolutely there. Um, I'll pull that up right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, actually, wait a minute. Hold on. I got, I got, I got to move some stuff around here. Hold on a second. Let me move X split down here. My computer had to do an update last night, so I have to kind of reset all of the things. Let me move the chat here. Okay. 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 Zoom. 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 All right. All right. Let's do that. All right. Let's open this. And the chapters just came out. Will you bring back the One Piece World plushie? Uh, yeah, it's right over there in the corner. I'll go grab it in a second here. I will go grab it in a second. Your hair grew long. I know. I cut it uh, about two months ago. I had it cut. I've always liked having longer hair. Don't like myself with short hair. Maybe it's because my, I don't know, my hairline, you know, is up to here now. So, yeah. All right, so... First page, okay, if we're going with first page being the cover story with Yamato and Momonosuke. Okay, so second page is, uh, like, uh, Bluegrass. Third page is the Giants and Marie Joie and the Room of Authority. Okay, yeah, it's the fourth page. It's the, f it's the first double page of the chapter, top right corner. You can clearly see a number four in the uh, summoning circle. Like, it's very clearly a number four. And then you can look over, and it's a little bit harder to see, but you can see a three on the next one. They're there. They're definitely there. Yeah. No break next week. Nope, no break next week. Do you think the five elders were willing to pay five billion for Lost Devil Fruit because one of them is not immortal yet? Um. So here's... Okay. So I don't think it has anything to do with the Op-Op Fruit. I don't. Let me go grab some, let me go grab some props. Let me take out your bingo card. Give me a sec. All right. All right. Here's, uh, here's the One Piece World plushie. Here's the Op-Op fruit. Got a straw hat just for good measure. All right. So I don't, I don't think it's the Op-Op fruit. Because the Op-Op fruit, the way that it was described to us, is that it gives you it gives you eternal youth. Um, I don't think the op op fruit the, the the way that we've seen the regeneration properties of the Garo say doesn't seem related to like medical technology at all, which is what the op op fruit is based off of. Like all of Law's techniques are like scalpel, defibrillator, you know, that kind of stuff, right? When the Garo say get wounded, like they get an arm blown off. Their arm just kind of like, like reforms from like the the fog or the the air around them just kind of recreates an arm. All right, so I think that's a little bit beyond the capabilities of the op op fruit to do that. If the op op fruit makes you, you know, eternally young or like whatever age you are when the surgery is performed, you just stay that age forever. I could understand that. But if you get, like, your head blown off, it, like, comes back. It's like, nah, I don't think the Op Op Fruit's capable of doing that. The Gorosei's abilities are. All right? So, I mean, he, I mean, Saturn getting, didn't get his head blown off by um, Kuma, but it came pretty damn close to it. So, yeah. I don't think it has anything to do with the Op Op Fruit. Not completely ready to rule out the whole situation with Eam. Although Ivankov did bring that up. Ivankov was like, we know that the Op-Op fruit can give people immortality to an extent. So maybe uh, that was Ivankov's idea, but Oda might have been throwing that in there as a red herring too. Make you think it was the uh, the Op-Op fruit. But if it is, if it does turn out to be the case, um, maybe it could be a situation where they're mythical zone fruits are the things that allow them to regenerate like they do but the reason they don't age is a separate matter and then that is the op op fruit abilities maybe that would make more sense i guess it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive it can be both 
It can be op op fruit makes them that age forever so they don't physically get older. They're whatever age than when the surgery was performed. And then their mythical zone powers or whatever powers Eam gave them allow them to regenerate just in perpetuity. Something like that. They were introduced as creatures, not fruits. Yeah, so that also gives you the idea. And I was, I was always hesitant to just say they're mythical zones. Every time that subject matter came up, I'm always like, yeah, they might be actual yokai. I guess they could just be mythical zones. But uh, they could also be actual yokai. I want them to be actual yokai. I want them to be yokai because that gives them a category above just devil fruit powers, right? And it makes more sense. I think Emu is the sea devil. Cthulhu or like that takes the ability to swim away from devil fruits and once defeated, they can all swim again. I like the idea that Eam hates devil fruits. I, I like that idea. I like the idea that Eam is the embodiment of, like, maybe not necessarily Cthulhu there, but, well, maybe, but, like, you know, Mother Ocean, Mother Nature, and Eam despises Devil Fruit abilities, and the, each of the five elders are embodiments of actual devils. They're real yokai, all right? And so they're not Devil Fruit users. And the reason they just resemble that with, like, the fog ribbon and everything like that is because there are Devil Fruits that copied these mythical creatures, basically. Like, they're, they're, they're rip-offs, as it were, right? That real sandworm is wild. I love the sandworm. I love the fact there's a sandworm. I love how it goes Itsumade, Hoki, uh, Bako Bakotsu, Gyuki, and then there's just a sandworm. <laughs> I love it. But why Mother Nature bad? Um, but why Mother Nature bad? Vegapunk confirmed that the reason, I mean, it doesn't really go into detail with it. The idea, the reason why Devil Fruits take away your ability to swim is because it's an affront to Mother Nature. It's almost like Vegapunk was describing Mother Nature as a conscious force that has their own mind that can actually affect the world. Like an actual god that's pissed off, probably because you're going back to the old stories of like mortals trying to copy the powers of gods. This is prevalent in a bunch of, a bunch of different religions, a bunch of different folk tales and mythology. Um, bad shit happens when humans try to copy gods or try to be like gods. All right. You know, it's like, I'm going to steal Zeus's thunderbolts. It's just Zeus is like, fuck you. I'm the only one that could use my thunderbolts, you know? So it's kind of like, no, humans have these devil fruits that allow them to have the powers of gods. And the mother of nature is like, those are unnatural. I'm taking those away. I'm the only one allowed to be a god, you know? Yeah, yeah. Why Mother Nature good? Yeah, that would actually be a good twist. It's we, we always talk about Mother Nature of like, oh, Mother Nature, she's this kind, motherly figure that looks after all of the creations of the Earth. What if that's the, the subversion to the trope in One Piece? And it's just like, no, Mother Nature's pissed the fuck off and she's coming for you. All right? <laughs> like, like, that could be cool. Yeah, Prometheus is a good example of that. Excuse me while I eat my power bar. Uh, good morning, Vietnam. Great movie. Robin Williams. Hmm. Yes. Let's talk about that next. Um, Venus Juro, Ethan, his, his mother just called him Ethan, um, having a black sword. So in the review, I said hockeyed up the sword. The reason I said that, and I didn't immediately say it was a black blade completely, which it very well could have been, by the way. So... We have a scene here. Now, this is in the anime, obviously. It's clearly not a black blade here. This is in the anime, though. I don't know if there's ever a shot where we see just the blade in the manga. It might be always in the scabbard. But I think there is a scene in the manga where we do see him, like, polishing his sword. And it's not a black blade. He could have a bunch of those swords. No, it's clearly the same sword he always has. In the last chapter, it's the same sword. It's the same guard. It's the same hilt. Same sword. Hmm. We got a shot in the manga where he is polishing it. I knew there was... I knew it was somewhere. I didn't know exactly. Hmm. Um, so I think he just used hockey to make it a black blade, which once again brings up the question of like, how the hell do you make a blade a black blade? You got two people that have done it. Well, two swords that are confirmed to be permanent black blades. Shusui, Yoru. That's it. Roger did not have a black blade. Whitebeard did not have a black blade. Um, Odin, 
in all of his amazing feats. Like, literally, it's just a laundry list of all this crazy shit Odin was able to do. He couldn't make them black blades. Shanks does not have a black blade. I mean, like, what do you gotta do to make it a black blade? He just painted it black. <laughs> what if what if Ryuma was just like, I'm just gonna paint my sword black. <laughs> and just, there it is. <laughs> oh my god. Let's see here. I think the Gorosei aren't described as users, that panel isn't because they aren't users, but rather the will of the fruit has completely synced up with them to the point where they might as well be considered the beasts. I mean, yeah, you could look at it like that, but you could just make it simpler and just have them be the actual yokai. I don't see the issue with them being actual yokai. These are like the final big... Like, this is at the end of every JRPG. You fight God, all right? We start off the story with Luffy fighting Alvita, and then it ends with him fighting actual gods. Makes sense to me, right? Yeah. Could be their numbers because we saw five on Saturn Circle and then yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. So I like to think they are their designations no matter what. By the way, if you go back and look at most of the time we see them in the Room of Authority, right? They are sitting in the position from left to right. So Jew Peter is sitting number one and then Ethan number two and then Top Man three, Marcus Mars four, and then Jay Garcia Saturn five. They are always sitting in this very particular order. Whenever we see... In fact, it's actually uncanny. Where's another one? Hold on. What's another angle? Well, I guess... Uh, okay, anime barring. Because anime will sometimes move them around. This is one from the manga. I mean, this this scene is from the manga. This is when Akainu goes to visit them. I remember the scene in the manga. Same, same order. Same order. Yep. In the throne room. By the way, somebody brought this up. I'd have to go back and look at all the shots of the Room of Authority now. If you look at that one scene in the Room of Authority where it's empty when the summoning circle's on the floor, if you look above the windows in that panel, you can actually see summoning circles above the panel. And I don't know if those have always been there. I'd have to go back and look at every image of the Room of Authority in the manga and see if they're there. Because you don't get to see the back of the... Oh, no, wait. Well, okay, so in this one... In this one, oh no, that, yeah, no, they're there. They're fucking there. Yep, they're all there. Holy crap, they're actually there in really good detail. Wow, look at that. Yeah, they're always there. Wow. Now, I don't know if they're meant to be gold, because if they're like the summoning circle on the floor, maybe they're meant to be black, like black paint on the walls or something like that. So I, I, I just interpreted that. I guess I just always thought it was just decoration or like like a shield or something in the background, you know? Yeah, yeah, they're always there. That is so cool. They were there during Jaya. Yeah, I think this was their first appearance in the manga right here. Yeah, this is their first appearance and they were there. Damn, Oda, Oda knows, man. Oda knows. What do you think is up with the Awakened Zone Cloud ribbons? Why is Luffy's white and the Gorosei's black? Well, Luffy's the good sun god and the Gorosei are like the evil other planets. So, I mean, like, very clearly Luffy is supposed to be a god of hope and the sun and light and goodness. The Gorosei are very clearly evil, darkness, lightning, bad. Ugh! You know, so th there, there is your explanation. There is your very well thought out, articulate response to that one. Luffy, good. Gorosei, evil. <laughs> so there you go. There's the reason. Um, did we already talk about how cool Samurai Gandhi is? No, we haven't talked about Ethan yet. I just want to call him Ethan. Hey, hey, Ethan, how you doing, Ethan? How many people, how many people know people named Ethan, right? Are they as cool as Ethan over here? Yeah, yeah. I just love that. I know his, I know it's Ethan Barron, but it's just so funny to me that, like, you have these super strong characters in One Piece, like the final bosses, or part of the final bosses of this story, and their names are, like, Peter. Ethan. Marcus. <laughs> Jay. Like, I have a cousin named Jay. Like, I, it's just... I guess the one that makes the most sense out of all of them is Top Man. Top Man doesn't really... Top Man is funny for other reasons, but it's not like an English name. <laughs> uh, hearing you say my name keeps throwing me. Yeah, there's people... Yeah, he's like, And then there's just Steve. Hey, guys. I'm the new member of the Garose. My name's Steve. Nice to meet you. 
Jerry Garcia. I know it's Jerry Garcia, but Jay Garcia is the way it's actually written. So, yeah, yeah. Top Man. I almost made Top Man the thumbnail for this stream. Because I thought it would be funny because he didn't do anything in the chapter. He showed up, turned into a giant boar, refuses to elaborate, and he doesn't do anything else. He literally just hangs out there. I guess they're going to fight Luffy and, the, and Dorian Bragi, but yeah. So I almost made him the thumbnail. I, I went with Marcus instead. It just fit better with the thumbnail, I think. But uh, there, there's old Marcus Mars hanging out. Dude, he looks like Gonfall. He really does. Like, this was right after, this was right before Skypea when they showed up, too. Right? It was right before Skypea or right after Skypea that the, uh, the Gorose first appeared. I think it was right after, I'm mean, right after Alabasta, right before, like, as we were getting to, like, Jaya Skypea, I think that's when they first showed up. Because look at this, really. Look at that. Like, there's, there's, there's a similarity here. In fact, I remember seeing this guy and immediately thinking, like, is he related to Gonfall in some way? Like, there's got to be something going on here, right? And he turns into a bird! That's Gonfall's thing! He has a bird! <laughs> oh, my God. There, there's something. There's something. I don't know. How did Sabo escape the skeleton horse that whipped half of the Passy Feast on the other? I don't know. I really don't know. I, uh, okay. I'll be honest with you. I'll be straight up with you. <sighs> I think Oda just needed the Gorosei to not kill Sabo there. He needed Sabo to get back to the revolutionaries and tell them about Eam and everything. Because looking at what they are capable of in the last chapter, it makes zero sense how Sabo escaped that room. Like, it really does. It... Oh, hi, teching from Michigan. Thoughts on latest chapter of My Hero Academia? I can talk about that, but that'll be later. That'll be at the end of the stream if I talk about that. Every, we've got to talk about One Piece first. Every ever plan to do a video series on the Netflix avatar? Probably not, no. Um, but anyway, forget Sabo. How did Wapple escape? No, no. Sabo, Wapple makes actually a little bit more sense than Sabo. It actually does. All right, let me break this down, all right? So Sabo is in this big cavernous room. He's hiding behind a pillar. Cobra is talking to Eam. Then they stab Cobra. They're all about to shoot him. Sabo comes out behind the pillar. Fire fist! Boom! Follow-up combo attack. Uses smothered mate. Tries to just one-shot Eam. So he's got the right idea. Sabo has the right idea. He's like, he's going to take that surprise round and just... Nuke the Goro say with a fireball and then follow that up. Fucking maybe he multi-classed fighter. Action surge. Second fireball. <laughs> Smacked my elbow off my desk just now. You know, whatever. Anyway. So he does that. The Goro say all transform into the like you know, forms. Eam starts marching down off of the throne, like and it's just like, oh god, what is this? And Cobra, he gets, Sabo gets stabbed, I think by Eam, gets stabbed by Eam's tail. Sabo's like, ah! You know, and then Cobra, this sick old man that can barely stand on his own, Cobra is like, I'll hold them off, Sabo! Get out of here! <laughs> the old man that can barely move is like, I'll hold them off! <laughs> You wouldn't be, Cobra would not be able to buy a Pico second of time against the Gorosei. Or rather, one of them could have killed Cobra. They could have just walked over him. It literally would have been like, I'll hold them back, up. Oh, it just gets run over immediately. How the hell did Sabo get to the door, open the door, get out into the hallway, navigate through Pangea, find a window, get out of, like, how the fuck did he get out of that castle? And get not only out of the castle, but all the way to the, the freaking red port to a boat where he hid in the bilge. How? <laughs> Cobra's just that guy. 
Oh my god, especially since we know Ethan apparently has some kind of clairvoyance ability. Ethan is able to, like, harness the powers of the fucking occult, and, like, I know where all the pacifistas are. Mm, and just, like, go and attack them and wipe out, like, how the hell did that happen? Yeah. He's the Flame Emperor, man. Just how it goes. Wapples makes a bit more sense because Wapple wasn't actually in the room. He was observing. And Eam kind of was just like, mm. they were like looking over Cobra's corpse. And then they're like, what is that? And then the second they, oh, and then Wapple freaks out, just starts biting through the hallways and jumps out. That makes more sense to me than Sabo, who was on their, like he had like, like, like six sniper scopes, like all six laser beams on him. Like, oh boy, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> how did you get out of that? Uh, they couldn't leave the room in their transformed state. How did Sabo get out of the room? He was very injured. Oh, man. Ethan should have been able to stop him at the door. There's no way. From what we've seen in the last chapter, Ethan should have been able to, like, zip around to the freaking door. Yeah. Um... He can't die twice. Yeah, no, no, that is the reason. Like, I honestly, like, like, they need it. We need Sabo to survive, so he can't, he can't die. He has to get away. Oda doesn't actually show him how he got away, but it's like, yeah, he, he got away. He got away. Sabo's just built different. Yep. Uh, he's a human jetpack. Yeah, but when he was injured and there were, like, six of the strongest beings in the world aimed at him. I don't think he's that fast. Yes, Jupiter is kind of odd. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier, yeah. He is indeed a little strange. It's not as fast as you're making it. It's pretty fast. It's pretty fast. If you can't... If you're going to tell me not a single one of those Gorosei could get to the door faster than Sabo... Maybe if so, maybe if it was like Kizaru or somebody, somebody that could travel at the speed of light, speed of sound, something like that. Mm mm. Maybe it was Taco Night before, and they all had bad gas. Okay, that's the most believable thing. I'll roll with that. Yeah. Um, is his name really Ethan? That's hilarious. It's Ethan Baron, all one word. But yeah, it's Ethan. Yeah. Uh, couldn't you, Peter, just burrow through the ground? Yeah. Good point. Yeah. You could argue they didn't want to leave the castle because they don't want everybody to see their forms. Sure, but, like, you know, we didn't actually see Sabo leave the Room of Authority. As, like, I feel like Oda got to that point and he was like, eh, okay, that might be a little bit difficult to actually show how he just opened the door and ran out, so I'm just going to cut to him being in a ship. It's like, okay, cool. Um, did talk Tekking already talk about Zoro taking the Sandai? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, I mean, the idea is Zoro's eventually... I, I guess we were thinking too small about Zoro upgrading to the Nidai. Although, by the way, I still think that should have happened. I still think that should have happened. I think in Zoro's fight with King, the Sandai should have broke. Let me go grab him really quick. Yeah, I, I think Zoro, I think Zoro honestly should have upgraded from the Sandai a while ago. Like, even if you wanted to say this would have, you know, like, even in Dressrosa or something like that. Um, I can understand maybe not wanting to do the same thing like what happened in Eni's Lobby where Zoro loses a sword. And then he has to go into the next arc without all of his swords. Like, I get that. And I was okay with what happened with Shusui, like, returning it and then him getting the Enma and everything like that. But I, I think the Sandai should have broke at some point. Maybe it could have broken, well... That's the problem. If it, if it broke while fighting Kaido, then he wouldn't have had all three swords against King. So you maybe you could have said a thing where, like, when he used Dead Man's Game against Kaido, maybe there could have been a mention of, like, oh, the sword is kind of... It's kind of brittle. Maybe we could even see, like, a crack beginning to form in the Sandai when he hit Kaido's, like, uh, like, like scales or something like right, that, okay? And then when he uses his final attack against King... He uses his ultimate attack against King, and then the Sandai just shatters. 
And then it's like, the fight's over at that point. King is defeated, but Zoro lost one of his swords. And then, you know, we have the, the fucking knee die, which is right there. It's right there. It was mentioned earlier. Zoro even saw the damn thing. He's friends with Tenguyama or Sukiyaki. It's right there. So, like, I don't get why Zoro did not upgrade to the Nidai. I don't get it. Then he would have had all three Owazumono grade swords. Like, that would have been perfect. You know? So, you know, he gets this. He gets the Nidai. And then eventually he fights Ethan and he upgrades to the Shodai. There you go. Easy. It was Luffy's sword, though. It, he kept... Well, it wasn't Luffy. Luffy stole it. Let's not... It wasn't Luffy's property, ladies and gentlemen. But Zoro kept asking, Hey, can I see that sword? Luffy's like, nah. He's like, no, seriously. I want to see that sword. It looks like an actually good sword. He's like, yeah, it's mine, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it is funny to see Luffy swinging around a freaking Nidai Kotetsu. But, like, it's for Momo. No, it isn't. No, it was the Ame no Habakiri was Momo's. It's not the Nidai. The Nidai is just hanging out in Tengu Yama's house. He just has it still. Yeah. Why can't Zoro make the Sandai a great sword? He probably could. I just want to see him have... I want to see him upgrade. I just want to see him get to the Shodai. I think it was just hockey. Because we've seen it in other panels and it wasn't a black sword. Yeah. Of course he stole it. He's a pirate. Yeah, good point. Still doesn't make it his, but good point. Uh, da, 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 da. Do you still do mailed letters? Yeah, we just did fan mail like last week. Uh, do you see, yeah, I have super chats all saved, so don't worry about it. Do you think Luffy will get Ace to use it to impale Akainu? Uh, we'll get Ace and use it to impale Akainu. I don't know where Ace is going to turn up. Probably somewhere, I hope. Uh, would you rather learn about Luffy's mom or Aizen's Bankai? It's weird to me that we don't know about either. Also excited for... Yeah, I'm of course excited for Thousand Year Blood War Part 3. Also, the new announcement, by the way, for Bleach really quick. It was very vague about what it was. But it was like, for the 20th anniversary of the anime... These swords will fall down. For the 20th anniversary of the anime, a new project that will transcend manga and anime is happening. And it's like... Alright, what does that mean? It's transcendent! I'm like... All right, what's that mean? <laughs> okay. Um, but anyway, uh, between the two, <sighs> Luffy's mom or Aizen's Bonkai? I can only have one. Dude, Aizen's Bonkai has bugged me for a long time. I might go with that. Luffy's mom is Dadan. We could just... We don't need to see Luffy's birth mother. I mean, we probably will. But I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Eisen's Bonkai on that one actually. Since Kaido is now defeated, will you go back and redo the hit counter on him you were doing when the first fight first started? I was only doing that when all five. I was doing a, I wanted to see which out of all of the five. So Zoro, Luffy, Killer, Kid, and Law who got the most hits on him, and then that they all separated at a certain point, and then they were like, oh okay, so that, they're not doing that anymore. So I I, I stopped the count. Uh, I think Luffy got the most by the way because Luffy's Luffy. But yeah. Um, it's an arcade machine. Bleach VR? Uh, it could be. Dadan's not a stepmom. She's the mom that stepped up. Damn straight. You're damn straight. You gonna make any more videos for Yomi no Sugai? I should. Because I've, I, 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 I've been behind on it a little bit. But I got some more of the volumes of it, and I was rereading it, like, already. It's only, like, 30 chapters long, but I was rereading it again. It's really good. You gonna make any more? I just read that. Uh, let's see. The Don is best mom and best dad. Basically is both, yes. Oda probably does not want to do many sword changes for Zoro. He would probably skip straight to the Shodai Katetsu. Though it would be cool if kings broke Zoro's Katetsu in one of their clashes. Yeah, I, um... I don't mind... Really, like, the Watto needs to stay with him all times. Like, the Watto is very, very important. The other two, you can kind of change them out. Especially if it's, you know, the cursed third generation for the cursed second generation. Like, that's not really, like, a brand new sword. I mean, it is, but it's, like, the same kind of idea. Good morning from Fairbanks, Alaska. Ah, Alaska. Lovely, lovely state. I would love to visit someday. Favorite Ichigo form. Um, favorite Ichigo form is probably 
You know, it's it's you know what? I was a big fan of you know, I'm probably just going to go with the Vasto Lorde form when he fought Ukiora, like the full on. I liked the big bulky version when he was fighting the Visards. But yeah. Any predictions for the next chapter? Uh, I think Mars is going to get through the barrier and is going to have to fight against Zoro and Jinbei. Uh, that's going to be easy. Uh, I think that's a simple one. I hope, uh, I guess we're also going to see, so Peter is going to regenerate. And then Luffy, Dory, and Bragi are going to go up against three of the Gorosei. So Dory or Bragi are going to fight against, like, Top Man and Peter. So the boar and the worm, because they're both, like, really big kind of creatures. And they're giants. So Dory's going to be like, you know, go, ba, 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 No, no, Dory is, uh, yeah, gia, 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 gia. I'll take the giant worm, Bragi. You fight against that boar. Go, ba, 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 ba. All right, Stride, you fight the spider guy. All right, and then Luffy was already fighting Saturn, so there you go. Um, yeah, let me handle it. Mars just yeets himself into the barrier. Uh, if it turns out the elders powder aren't devil fruits, do you think they could still eat one? Um, maybe. Or maybe not, because if Eam is really the mother of nature that hates devil fruits, probably not. They probably couldn't eat devil fruits now. Could Luffy multiply himself to fight all five? I, I thought that immediately after, like, they all five of them showed up. Pretty sure he can't do that. But it's an interesting idea. Mr. Three solos two Gorosei. Is that because, uh, so there was, yes. When Dory and Bragi were fighting at Little Garden, people have actually brought this up because I've mentioned, like, oh, man, Dory and Bragi, they've been fighting for a century, man. They've been at it. The stamina, the strength, the power. And it's like, yeah, Mr. Three was able to, like, beat them it's just like okay so what happened there was they were fighting and then they uh mr three tricked one of them to drink the booze that was actually explosive and then also allowed uh i think he used his wax so at the last minute like he tripped like dory tripped and then Broggy hit him and then the thing blew up and then it's just like oh and then he crashes down by the way, the guy had a giant barrel of booze just blow up in his stomach. And he was basically fine afterwards. He was out for like a couple minutes, like 10, 15 minutes, came right back up. Uh, that whole fight on Little Garden did not last very long, all things considered, right? Uh, at Mr. Three is just that guy. And then Broggy gets held down by the wax. But there's a moment where he's about to break out of it. And then he stabs him, like, with the nails. And then you might argue they could break out even again, but at that point, Luffy and Usopp show up, and then even Zoro, who was about to cut off his legs, were like, yeah, all right, Luffy, I'll just leave you to it. So, yeah, I think if we had Mr. Three here right now, he would be able to... All you're saying to me, all the only contention here is if Mr. Three was here, he'd be able to solo some of the Gorosei. Well, guess what? Mr. Three is not here, ladies and gentlemen, so we're just going to have to deal with Dory and Brocky, okay? <laughs> Everyone hit the like button. Yeah, I mean, sure, if you want to. Go, go for it. It wasn't an honorable fight! Mr. Three taught us that strategy trumps pure strength. Uh, yeah, I mean, it does. I mean, it's it's one of those things in anime in general. It's like, if you have somebody that's really powerful, but if somebody does something underhanded and is able to get one up on them, is, you know, does that make them stronger than that, you know, kind of thing? And it depends on the series. Like, it's that episode, remember that episode of Dragon Ball Super? I know, this is a bad example, because it's Dragon Ball Super, where Goku gets shot by, like, a robber, and it actually does leave a mark on his on his skin. And you're sitting there like, bullshit. There's no way that should even leave a mark on him. And it's like, yeah, I guess I got a little bit careless when I was training. It's just like, oh, screw off. You, you know, it's like it's something like that. Um, but, you know, Broggy eating, I mean, Dory drinking booze and then blowing up in his stomach. And that kind of knocks him out for a little while. I could see that, sure. Yeah. I think you met Krillin. No, no, no. No, no, no. It happened with Krillin. It also happened with Goku. And then there was the shot in Resurrection of F where Goku in Super Saiyan Blue gets shot with a laser rifle and just like, oh, pfft. I'm like, what the fuck? Uh, yeah, Kid Goku got shot in the head and he was basically fine. <laughs> yeah. But that's super, though. Not a great example. Not a great example. 
you know. Thoughts on the possibility of Yamato taking down the Hoki, just like Odin, uh, Mountain Boar. Yeah, a lot of people have referenced that because Yamato wants to be like Odin. Odin sliced down the boar. Um, Yamato is off having his little uh, cover series right now, so maybe later. Not right now. I mean, none of the Gorosei are going to die right now. It's not going to happen, all right? They're all going to still be around for a while, um, especially with all five of them there. There's no way they're dying. It would be really stupid if Oda had one of them die now at this point. Like, it would just be like, oh, yes, they can be killed. It's like, yeah, but that would kind of lessen their impact a little bit there. But, yeah, maybe eventually later uh, Yamato could show up and help out the Straw Hats as part of the big group. Like, the Grand Fleet's there, Yamato's there, Momonosuke's there. Big giant war, and then maybe Yamato could fight against uh, Top Man. Goku has regular human durability if he's not using Ki. Well, did he know how to use Ki when he was a little kid? Because that was before he learned how to use Ki. And a bullet still didn't hurt him, really. I mean, it kind of hurt him. He was just like, ow, but like, eh. Uh, I want the Goro Say as Pokemon. Okay. We should do that as the next... We'll do that as the next Pokemon. Okay. So every year... <laughs> Every year, when I do uh, around election day, because I help out at the election center down where I'm at, because uh, there's a person that one of my neighbors runs it, and uh, she's like the judge for the election center, and uh, I help out there. I'm basically just the guy that sits by the door and hands out stickers to people. That's basically my job, and then I read a book. But I'm gone all day. It's like an all-day thing. So that's when I always do the Pokemon videos. So I did the, if the Toby Ropo had Pokemon teams, or if uh, the Yonko had Pokemon teams. I guess this this year, I think it's in April, is the election, the primary for Pennsylvania. I guess um, I should do the Gorosei Pokemon teams for this one. But this time I got to do it right, because I really fucked up the last time I did it. I had Kaido's team, and I didn't include a Gyarados. And there was no, there was no shortage of, like, people gave me endless shit for that. Like, how do you not put a Gyarados on Kaido's team? It's literally what he is based on. And I'm like, or the myth is the same myth that he is based on. And I'm like, I completely forgot. It just, it didn't even occur to me. Didn't even occur to me. So sometimes, man, that shit just happens where it's something so obvious and it just flies a mile over my head. So we got to make sure we get the Gorosei right this time, everybody. How about you guys just help me with the, with the teams? Well, no, because then I, I have to come up with some of them. But, like, okay, we're going to... All right, what, what's, the, what's the Pokemon that's a sandworm? What's, what's, the, <laughs> what's the sandworm Pokemon? You also gave Teach a Lunala instead of a Necro... Yeah, but it was still the moon. It was still the same idea. All right, yeah. Uh, give him, okay, Mars has to have an Archops, that was even in the spoilers, like, the spoilers for that chapter even said, he looks like an Ar uh, Archops, I don't know how to pronounce that Pokemon's name, um, Orthworm, Orthworm, that's a thing, alright, let's look it up, Orthworm, let's get their, let's get the basic ones out of the way, so I don't mess that up, okay, what the hell is this thing, guys, what the hell? What is this? This is from this is from Scarlet and Violet, isn't it? Yeah, I played Scarlet and Violet. I don't remember this thing. <laughs> Look, okay. All right, fine, fine, fine. That's Chew Peter's ace. There you go. He gets an Orthworm. All right. Let me write these down here. All right, all right. Peter gets an Orthworm. I'll throw other worm-based Pokemon in there, like Wormpole. You know, we'll, we'll throw other worms, other grounds. They're going to be ground types because it's a sandworm, so whatever. Okay, all right, all right. A skeleton horse. Pokemon skeleton horse. So we got, like, Rapidash. We got Clydesdale. I don't think, I think Clydesdale's an actual horse. Okay, Pokemon horse. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, that looks cool. Spectriere, Spectriere. That actually looks really cool. It's a ghost horse. It's a ghost horse, right? Or is it dark? I don't know. Either way. It looks cool, though. Yeah, that looks neat. Yeah, we'll throw other horses in there, too. We have to throw, like, an Agislash in there, too, because it's a sword. But, like, yeah, this thing looks this thing looks neat. No, Glass Tier. All right, all right. We're just doing, we're just doing Gorosei Pokemon now. Um, oh, that, ooh. 
Ooh, ooh, okay. That thing looks cool. That thing looks really neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a lot of horse space Pokemon. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Probably both of these. Probably both of these are going on the team at some point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gold. Oh my god, there's so many recommendations for Ethan. Uh, what's that one? Gold. What's that thing? Oh, okay, I get it. But yeah, the, these are these are good horses. I might go with the um the oh the, the ice power. See right there, the fact that it's like oh that kind of looks like a skeleton horse. Oh wait, it's ice. He uses ice. <laughs> it's just like that. My brain does not work right in certain situations. All right, um, but that's pretty cool. So we'll use that thing. What's that? Glass tier. Okay, glass tier. Glass tier. All right, let's let's put that in there. Okay, Ethan gets that thing. All right. Top man. Okay, what's a giant boar? Probably M boar, I guess. Does M boar actually look like a boar though? M boar is like okay, he's a boar, but he doesn't look like an actual boar. He's standing on two legs for God's sake. Boars don't stand on two legs. So M boar is a good start, but I think we could do a little better than that. Unless that is the only option we have here. Tusk. Look it up. Greater Tusk. Oh yeah, Great Tusk. But that's from um yeah, but that's from, uh, that's more of like a mammoth kind of elephant sort of thing. You know, that's, you know. Mammo swine, also a mammoth. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think less mammoth and more, and more boar. Um, it, it, and boar might be our best shot. Every, everyone's saying, Okay. Yeah, these are all mammoths. These are all mammoths, guys. Pilo swine is a mammoth. Mammo swine is a mammoth. Great tusk is some kind of mammoth. Elephant. We're, we're doing more boar here. Lechonk. All right, there we go. Yeah, even Lechonk. Is, does this thing have an evolved form? Or is it just a Lechonk? Uh, no, I think it... Okay, it just, it just, it's just its own thing. Okay. Um, Mammo Swine is a mammoth and a swine. All right, we'll use Mammo Swine if there's no other options. But I've used Mammo Swine before in other in other Pokemon videos. It's also a swine. It's clearly more elephant than swine. The 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 elephant swine ratio is clearly seventy to thirty. <laughs> like, look at this thing. It is clearly more woolly mammoth than swine. Look at that. Look at that. We got we got a good 90% mammoth. The only thing about the swine part is its nose. Yeah. Yeah, we'll probably use mammo swine though. Okay. It is 100% pig. <laughs> Looks like a pig to me, Tekking. Well, I, I, I will refer you to its name, which literally has mammoth in it. Trump, t t uh, Trump card, checkmate, Lincolnites, whatever. You know, there it is. Okay. So, okay, we'll do, we'll do Mammo Swine for Top Man. Okay. Okay. That's, that's enough of a pig. All right, all right. Who's next? Mars. Okay, so that's an Archatops. That, that thing's... Yeah, I'm just gonna write that down. I'm never gonna look that up. I, I know I know which one that's gonna be for that. Alright, alright. And then finally giant spider. Okay. Giant poison spider. So Aratidos or I'm gonna say spider Pokemon. What else do we got for spider Pokemon here? Alright, yeah, we got We got Joltik and Garvanchula, but they're both like electrics. I kinda want I kinda want a, just a poison spider. Galvantula is, yeah, but Aratidose would make more sense, because Aratidose is actually poison. Yeah, I did a lot of spider Pokemon with Black Maria when I did the Toby Robo. So I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to diversify Saturns. Cause Saturn actually has a lot of stuff going on for him, because he's also the science guy. So I have to have a spider, but like I might reference also Ushioni is a cow spider. So, maybe we could put some cow Pokemon in there, too. But it, it's not just going to be all... Does Saturn use poison, though? Yes! He uses poison! He stabs things with his legs, and they melt. That's... Yeah, it's poison. 
Probably closer to uh, acid, but it is poison. Yeah, I'm going to look up... Um, oh, you know what? Metagross isn't a bad idea because Metagross is also kind of spider-esque, but also steel, which is more like technology. Okay. All right. I'll 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 write down a Ratados right now for Saturn, just for the sake of him being a spider. Um, but they're not all going to be spiders. We'll we'll have to we'll have to be a little clever when it comes to Saturns. I don't want them just to be spiders. Okay. All right, there you go. There's the Pokemon. There's the aces for the Gorosei. We got an Orthworm, Glass Tear, Mamoswine, Archops, and then Aratidos. Maybe a shiny Metagross. Okay, but we'll get back to that. I'll make a whole video about their full team. Stay tuned. And then I will mess I will I will miss something very obvious and then everyone will let me know. What do you think Zephyr's zodiac animal is? Uh Zephyr wait wait oh, oh Z. Oh okay. Oh okay. Like Zed from the movie. I was like Zephyr. What is I was thinking Zephyr Strike from D&D. And I'm just like, okay, no no. Zephyr. Um he would have had to have been maybe he could be the rat. Maybe he was the rat. The rat's the only one the the sheep might have the sheep or the goat because sometimes it's a sheep sometimes it's a goat might actually be Sengoku because Sengoku always has a goat around him uh, so that he might have been the sheep uh, and then we would have a rat and a snake and if maybe Smoker is going to be the snake later maybe maybe the rat could be um, Zephyr if we're going with the the zodiacs. If I could be in the One Piece world, would I be a Marine, a Revolutionary, or a Pirate? If I had to choose one of those... All of them have a high probability of me dying. So I would love to just be a Baker. I would just work... I would be a civilian. But if I had to pick one of those... Marine is probably out because I will be just a... Like, like, you know, semen recruit, you know, Crawford, go and fight. Like, I don't want to. It's just like, oh, well, there you go. <laughs> I'm just going to die. Probably revolutionary because I feel like Dragon's health plan is a little bit better than being a pirate. You know, I feel like there's some benefits to being the revolutionaries. You know, I'd, I'd be a revolutionary. You'd be safe as a revolutionary. They don't do anything. No, Dragon doesn't do anything. The dr the revolutionaries are out there doing shit. They are. They've liberated many islands. Super chat time. Yeah, I guess we could do that. Super chat time. Okay. Um... Okay, well, please look up the Kids Online Safety Act. It will censor the internet. It will affect anime and manga on the net. Mass censorship on the net! I have no idea what that is, but uh, there was something like that similar that I think was supposed to be talked about a few years ago. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen because every few years there's always some kind of like um, there was even like back in the day there was like Sopa and Pippa. Remember those, you know, and they didn't I don't think those went anywhere. Uh, but yeah, I think every few years there's always an attempt to like we're going to censor everything on the Internet or something and it just never Never coalesces. Um, teching for next Pirate King after Luffy. But I'd have to look that up. I just I just don't know. Uh, thoughts on the possibility of... Okay, I talked about that. How are you on Undead Unluck? It's going insane. Yeah, I just read the chapter that came out today. It's very insane. I don't even want to... I can't even talk about it because like the arc we're in right now is so different from the rest of the entire story. So it's really good, though. Read Undead Unluck. Do you think we'll see all graded swords by the end? I think we can see all of them because there's only 12... Uh, there's only 12 Supreme Grades. Maybe Zoro might turn the Wado into a Supreme Grade at the end. So I could see that. Like, there's 13. Sure. Um, but yeah, there's only 12. And we already know a, We already know quite a few. We know Yoru. We know Ace. We know the Shodai. So they're right there, that's, that's a quarter of them. Um, Murokumogiri. Is Whitebeard's Naganata. That's one. So that's that's four. Uh, we know probably Griffin. Hasn't been confirmed, I think, but Griffin is a solid pick for five. Um so there's five right there. We're definitely getting there. We can get we can get seven more. You know, plus maybe the Watto at the end of it. 
Or maybe Enma. Um, love your channel. My question for you is if the Elder's powers aren't... Oh, I answered that one already. Uh, I don't think they could eat Devil Fruits, though, because of the effect of the... Um, um, like, Eam hating Devil Fruits. Uh, let's see. I think I got most of these, honestly. Yomi no Sugai. Answer that. I should make more videos about Yomi no Sugai. Ace. Uh, da, 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 Luffy's mom. How did Scabo, how Sabo escape the skeleton horse? Yeah, like, we had a whole discussion about that. Chance of seeing Eam face at the end of all this. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I think by the end of Egghead, we're going to cut back to the empty throne, and Eam's going to be like, Grr. You know, all the Goros say maybe return to Eam. It's like, I'm sorry, Lord Eam, we failed. <laughs> you know, something like that. Which elder gave chase to capture Wapple? I don't even know if they even knew. Like, they kind of like, is somebody there? And then by the time they turn, is like, is somebody there? Wapple's already seven rooms away, jumping out of the building. Yeah. What if Vegapunk is using the 10-minute timer to draw the Gorosei in order to expose them to the world via the Dendemushi? I've seen this theory around a lot. I just don't think that Vegapunk knows it. Like, he can't predict the future on that scale. Because the level of planning... I mean, it would be absurd to him being like, the Gorosei are going to arrive at the island, and then they're going to kill me, and then I'm going to broadcast their forms to the world. Like, that's really debunking on one of the Gorosei personally coming to Egghead and murdering Vegapunk. That, like, Vegapunk would have to predict that. So unless he paid a visit to Charlie first and got his fortune read, I don't think that's the case. And I also think he actually is going to say to the world something about, like, not, aha, I was tricking you the entire time. It was actually just to expose the Gorosei. No, I think he actually is going to say something about the history of the world. Um, favorite fight of each straw hat? Dude, I love Usopp's fight with Luffy, so that's two of them right there. Uh, no, Luffy's fight with, um, Magellan is good, when Magellan kicked his ass, uh, but no, Luffy's fight with Doflamingo I really like. Um, let's see, Zoro's favorite fight is probably, I I'm gonna pick weird fights when I say these, because I want to immediately say Ryuma, but that fight wasn't very long, but I really loved, like, the music and the build-up to that fight. Ah, uh, that was really solid. Uh, Nami's fight against. Let me think here. Nami against Miss Doublefinger. I guess I'll just say there. Uh, Usopp against Luffy. Sanji against Jabra. Because I love that when he went Diablo Jambe for the first time. That's more of a nostalgia thing. But I remember watching those episodes when I was in high school, and I'm like, oh, Diablo Jambe. The foot of the devil. I'm like, oh my god, that's so cool! Uh, Chopper fighting against... Uh, I mean, it's just gonna be... Actually, you know what? Chopper against um, either Kumadori because of Monster Point, or when Chopper... When, when everybody was getting their asses kicked at Saba Odi, and Chopper just downed three Rumble Balls at once, and then went into Monster Point against Sentomaru. That was a good moment, too. Robin's fight probably against Black Maria. That was the coolest Robin has been like in fight wise in a long time uh, her demonio kind of takes that uh, I should probably go back to the regular chat for this particular discussion here because this is this is something that's like very yeah um, Frankie against Senor Pink Brooke against um, probably I guess I guess this I guess this Brooke against Big Mom I was gonna say Zio but Brooke against Big Mom, yeah, that, that was, we didn't, yeah, Brooke against Big Mom. That was a good one. And then we got Jinbei probably just against Who's Who, which is technically, I guess, the only major real fight he's had since he joined the Straw Hats officially was when he fought against Who's Who. Yeah. Uh, do you think Eam will kill one of the Garosei? Maybe. Maybe Eam will rip out one of the, I'm taking my power back! rips it out of Saturn, and Saturn's like, no! And then he starts aging, like, hundreds of years in, like, the matter of seconds. He's like, no! Yeah! You know, and then all the other guards are like, fuck! <laughs> and it's like, it's like, let this be a message to you now. I do not accept failure! 
Jinbei versus Ace was cool. We didn't see the full fight, though. We just kind of, like, they were hanging out. It was like, I'm going to fight you. Okay, well, I owe a favor to Whitebeard, so I'll fight you. And then we just skipped to, like, ten days later, and they're still there. Or seven days later, I guess. Eam Aswallen. Basically, yeah. Yeah. That's some Lord Ruler stuff type. Yeah, well, that's Eam. Eam basically is. Okay, let, let's talk about Eam for a second here. Let's back up a moment. I want to I chat with you with Eam for a second. All right. Eam is playing the part right now of mysterious shadow ruler. Doesn't really, doesn't say much up until they were speaking with Cobra. But even in the conversation with Cobra, we got the impression very, very, um, very conceited. Very much like I'm that does not deign an answer to that question. You will answer me, you know, speaks in a very archaic fashion. Um, this is a problem, not a problem, but it can be a potential issue when it comes to major bad villains. It's like, OK, you can make the villain really stoic, really like badass. But then they also kind of run the risk of becoming really boring in that regard. You know what I mean? Now, Eam does get pissed. Eam does have rage issues. That does happen. Eam is not, like, always calm and collected. We saw Eam get really pissed off. Especially when the Will of D is mentioned, right? So, I'm curious, like, is Oda gonna give us, like, any time with Eam? To, like, get to know their fucking personality or something? Because if not, Eam's just gonna become, like, I... Am evil. <sighs> and that's kind of it. Um, we'll probably get a flashback to the Void Century to seem Eam back then. Um, Eam is a lady. Very well could be. I try to use, like, they, them when referring to Eam because we just don't know. Um... Maybe we can have a chapter where we just have Eam by themselves in the flower room looking at, like, a photo album or, like, a picture or something from the days long past or something. And then Eam has, like, an internal monologue or maybe some, like, I don't know. Something. But we need to we need to kind of focus on Eam a little bit because otherwise Eam is just shadowy final boss character and that's their whole personality. You know what I mean? I beat um, Persona 3 Reload last night. I beat Nyx. And um, that fight was like... Spoilers for anybody that hasn't played Persona 3 Reload or Persona 3, I guess. Uh, which, by the way, I found out there was a version on the portable that I should check out. Because apparently the social links are a little different on the portable one. But, um, yeah, they're building up Nyx. Like, the entire latter half of the game. Like, Nyx is, is death incarnate. Y you can't possibly wait no spoilers okay well i gave you a spoiler warning so if you don't want to hear it then just cut here um so i have 10 days left before fighting okay well then cut it here cut it here then all right i haven't finished it yet holy shit like okay okay a lot of people are like fuck stop talking i'm like all right all right all right all right <laughs> isn't his point being irredeemable no 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 this is very important this is an important distinction to make okay you can have character development for a villain that's irredeemable you don't have to redeem them, but you can learn more about them. There is a difference between those things. And there's a certain situation where... We're not even talking about Persona 3 now. It's fine. It's fine. Go play Persona 3. It's really good. I did the final boss last night. Maybe I'll talk about it some other day, but not now. So don't worry about it. Okay. So what I mean is, like, you can have this really horrible character. Like Orochi. Orochi is a perfect example of this. Orochi is an awful character. But we still spend time with Orochi. We learn what his personality was and why he ended up that way. Now, maybe you could feel a little sympathy for him because his whole clan was basically, like, headhunted and shit and, like, lynched. Which, yeah, there's some, like, oh, I feel bad for him. But also, at the same time, it's like, I don't think Odo was trying to redeem Orochi. Oro o Odo was not like, Orochi wasn't that bad of a guy. But no, we got character development with him. We learned why he did what he did and why he just wanted to burn Wano to the ground and he was still a piece of shit. I don't want there to be a villain that has no character development because then it's just empty. It's just, I am the villain and I am big, and I am evil, and I am bad, and I can channel these demonic powers, and I will fight you. 
And we don't really spend that much time with them, and we don't learn a lot about them, and we don't know why they're doing this, or what their backstory was, or anything in particular. Like, even the most irredeemable evil son of a bitch still has personal things that, like, they fear, and things they're worried, you know, and things like, stuff like that, things they enjoy, and stuff like that. Like, that's, like, the more idea of, like, unless Eam is, like, not even human at all at this point, which you could honestly argue that. So it's just learning more about the person and, like, who the fuck are we fighting? You know what I mean? Like, is this just evil incarnate and then that's it, which is honestly really boring to me? Or is this an actual person that has, you know, like, why are they doing this? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, Caesar Clown. Irredeemable. Experimented on kidnapped children with drugs. But he has character development. We know why he's doing what he's doing. There's a very big difference. Just because you have a flashback with a villain does not mean that Oda's like, oh, you're trying to redeem him. I'm like, no! No! That's not what this is about! Yeah. Uh, do you think Mihawk and Shanks have something like Ashura? Probably, yeah. We have not seen Mihawk go 110% all out. Absolutely not yet. Don't know if it'll be Ashura necessarily, but he will have a bat. Like, we have yet to see Mihawk full throttle, full power, what his final attack is, you know what I mean? Probably slices the goddamn moon in half, and then Eneru is up there like, no! <laughs> yeah. Gangster Gastino is a cool guy. Gangster Gastino did nothing wrong. Yeah. Even Blackbeard. We learned a little bit more about Blackbeard. We don't know that much about his past, really. We know he was an orphan, and then Whitebeard recruited him. That's basically it. We know a little bit about his powers, like he doesn't sleep, but we don't know about really what makes him tick, all right? Uh, at least in his backstory. But we'll learn more about that as we go, and Oda's really good with that type of shit. Oh, by the way, since we're on the subject with Mihawk and Zoro, let's talk about that. So a lot of people brought up when, um, y you know... Zoro finishing off Lucci like that in the last chapter. A couple of things to address with that. So first of all, I said that Zoro was only using two swords. Uh, well, in the last chapter, he was, because you see the Watto sheathed on his back. He's using two. Enma gets knocked out of his hand. Sanji is like, you're a burden, you damn Ma said. And then Zoro's like, okay, I'll show him who's a burden. Grabs the Enma, takes Sandai, pulls out the Watto, finishes off Lucci in a three-sword style attack. Zoro, someone pointed out, like, Zoro started the fight with three swords. So that makes me think even more that Zoro was, he was messing around here in some capacity. Like, he was like, I'm a Yonko commander, I can't be going all out against you. That means he had three swords when he started to fight Lucci, and at one point, he's like, you know what? You're not even worth three swords. And he took out the Watto and sheathed it. I could beat you with just two. And a lot of people brought up, dude, Zoro is trained by Mihawk. Maybe some of Mihawk's, like, little idiosyncrasies and stuff are rubbing off on Zoro, where Mihawk has, like, oh, you don't hunt rabbits with a cannon, you know, like that kind of thing. Maybe Zoro is like, okay, I'm getting to the level now where I'm, like, I'm a Yonko commander, I'm getting to that status now. I have that position. You know what? Lucci's a rabbit. I'm not hunting a rabbit with my strongest techniques. I'm going to show him what... I'm not even going to use three swords against him. I'm just going to use two. Yeah. So so people are actually bringing that up. A lot of people brought that up in the, in the chapter. A lot of comments about that. Like, Tekken, you do know who Zoro learned to fight from, right? Like, oh yeah, Mihawk. Mihawk loves to play with his food. And it's like, yeah. Holy shit. But that makes sense because that's what I thought the whole time. Like... Zoro's not using Ashura. He's, he could, like, let me ask you a question. And there's really no, when the fight started, and it's Luchi versus Zoro, could have Zoro, nine sword style dead man's game, one shot fucking Luchi. And just like, yes, from what we saw in the last chapter, yes, he 100% could have done that. There's no reason he couldn't have. There's no reason. He chose not to. He's like, I'm not going to use my strongest moves on you. You're not worth that. You know? And I hope this is addressed. I hope Sanji or somebody brings it up. Like, what were you doing? And just like... Now, also, Zoro did not know all the Gorosei showed up. They were feeling the hockey. They were feeling the weird vibes coming from downstairs. But they didn't know the Gorosei were there. They didn't know, like, Vegapunk died and everything like that. Like, he didn't know that. But, like, yeah. 
Zoro has ego problems. 110%, yes. Zoro renamed his tiger hunt just for leopard. Yeah, he was like leopard hunter. Yeah, like that was that was the joke, yeah. And then we have 11111 coming up. Yep. So everyone's like, it's chapter 11111. This is going to be Zoro's chapter. This is going to be all Zoro. I'm like, all right, I want it to be Zoro. I want Marcus Mars to show up. Zoro's there, bandana next to Jinbei, and then launches an attack against him. I want to feel that. I want to feel that next chapter. They don't have a comm system? Um, either Zoro took his off or whatever because he didn't he didn't hear the Sanji calling him a burden from his own comm. In fact, we see his ear. He doesn't have the headphones on anymore, so I don't know if they got destroyed in the attack or he took him off at some point. Jinbei was having the discussion with Sanji. Zoro overheard that conversation. So yeah, they weren't... Zoro didn't have the comm on for whatever reason. Ugh. I had to turn my heater on down here because I, I, I left my garage door open. My basement and my garage are like the same kind of thing. And my garage is like not heated. So I left the fucking garage door open all night. Not not the big one, but like a door into my garage. This is a boring conversation. The whole basement got really cold last night. So I came in here and I'm like, shit, got to turn my heater on. Isn't the bird Goro saying the Labo phase? Yeah, I mean, next chapter, I mean, he, the bird just... Ah! And just crashed into the dome. But, like, yeah, it's going to get through, probably just through sheer force of will, is eventually going to get through the dome. And then they're going to fight Zoro. Yeah, that's next chapter, yeah. Um, all it took was a taunt from Sanji. Absolutely. Wait, you're in a basement? Yeah, basically, yeah. This is, this is the lowest level of my house, yes. Well, unless you count the sub-basements. That are underneath the, the Luffy. I have a trap door underneath the Luffy carpet. Yeah. But yeah, I think it came down to Zoro wanting to test himself. Wanting to prove that, like, I can beat Luchi without using my full power. And it was it was a shitty decision. Like, he should have finished the fight as quick as he could. And he clearly could have. And he didn't. So this needs to be addressed. It does look like a little bit like the Maniac's Lair. I gotta be honest with you, whenever I have people coming over to my house and they're not like, they're not huge fans of anime, this is the room that's always like, I have to like preface by saying like, all right, Here's, like, I'm giving them, like, a house tour. Like, here's my kitchen. Here's the, you know, the the bathroom. Here's, you know, my guest room or whatever. And then it's like, okay, here's my office. I want to preface by saying this is literally my job. And then you walk in and then just, ah, <laughs> this stuff. Uh, why are they at your house then? You, you Okay, this is going to blow your mind. This is going to blow your mind. I have friends that don't like anime. <laughs> I have friends that don't watch anime. I know. I know. It's going to blow your mind. Like, what? That's not possible, Tekking. Fuck you. You're, nah. Nah, that's not a thing. <laughs> Just... uh, or, like, uh, my friend Warren and Amber were down here a few months ago. My friend Warren, I've been friends with him since, like, third grade. He doesn't like that much anime. I think he's seen some, but he's not, he's not an anime guy. But he brought his wife down. And his wife, not at all. Like, not whatsoever. So we come down here, and it's just like, uh, and she's like, oh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> I was like, all right. Yeah. Preposterous, nanny! <laughs> uh, wait, you guys have friends? Aw, Warmaster. Warren is a legend in the teching lore. He is. He's, he's been my one of my friends for the longest time. Actually, in terms of, like, how long we've been friends, probably the longest that I still stay in regular touch with. Yeah. Because I was like seven when we started hanging out. Do they know you're a YouTuber? Yes. All of my friends are very clearly, very painfully aware I'm a YouTuber. They all know what I do. Maybe some of them aren't like 100% like, yeah, I don't know exactly what he does, but he does YouTube stuff. They know that much. Uh, wait, you guys exist? Are you, are you a solipsist? There's like a solipsist in the chat right now. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, have you read Da Don Da Don Da Don? A little bit, yeah. 
They tested Saturn's food for poison. Could they potentially poison them? No, I don't even think... Okay. I don't even know if Kizaru knew that Saturn could turn into a giant spider. Like, I don't even know if he knew that. All right? He didn't seem that surprised by it, but maybe he had... I'm sure he had suspicions, like, something's up with the Gorosei. Something's up with them. Like, the higher-ups in the Marines have to know something is weird just because they don't fucking age. Like, nobody... Like, like regular foot soldiers don't see the Gorosei at all. But, like, the higher-ups, like Vice Admirals and Admirals, probably over the generations, they've been seeing the Gorosei, and it's like, yeah, they don't... They don't age. It's been the same as Gorosei for like 400 years. They don't old, They don't age. So there's there's some going on there. But you don't mention it because it's like you don't want to die. So I'm sure Saturn had some idea. I mean, I'm sure Kizaru knew of like there's some weird devil fruit magic power going on with them or hockey. I don't know. I don't want to know, but there's some going on, right? So I think it was more about just like don't want their... I, I, I just think Saturn doesn't want to eat shit food. You know, if Saturn's going to eat good food, it's going to be prepared by the young cooks, you know? Kizaru is still down. What's with that? Yeah, Luffy just beat an admiral. I l Luffy beat an admiral? And, like, we're not even talking about that because there's all this other shit going on right now. Luffy definitively beat Kizaru. He crushed him, chucked him off the island, slammed him to a battleship, and he's like, oh, and he's not getting back up. He hasn't been back up yet, so... Can we can we call that fight? Can we call that? I, it, it's it's well past a ten count at this point. All right, like can we can we call that, please? Because that happened. What would happen if Bluegrass rides Zunisha? You know, it might be some kind of. Uh, I wonder. I wonder if it's like a D and D thing. Where, like, if the animal you're controlling has a certain intelligence, then you can't manipulate it. Uh, you know, like, the, the cyborg animals are, like, it was like a giraffe originally that was modified to be a cyborg. So, at its core, it's still a giraffe. Makes sense. The pacifistas were robots. Makes sense. You could ride those. Zunisha is a very intelligent, sentient being. So, I'm wondering if, if and, and in that regard, if Bluegrass could jump on the top of Frankie and ride Frankie around. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. If you had to start his channel from scratch without taking your current following with you, do you think you could build the channel to where it is right now, to what you have learned? You know, I've, I don't know if you meant it in the sense of, like, going back in time, but I've often thought about that. I've often thought about, like, ooh, what would have happened if I would have went back in time to when I was 16 years old when I first started the, the channel? Doing then what I knew, doing then what I know now, you know, kind of a situation. Uh, I think I could have, well... Okay, in that regard, I would be prophetic. I would be literally predicting every One Piece chapter exactly. <laughs> I'd be like, eh, in this uh, in this chapter, you know, guys, I think there's a time skip about to happen. You know, there's going to be a two-year time skip. Uh, I think Nami's boobs are going to get way bigger. Uh, okay, that you don't need to be prophetic for that. But, uh, you know, I think Zoro is going to train with Mihawk. Uh, and everyone would be like, fuck you, Zoro's not going to train with Mihawk. That's the stupidest theory ever. I'm like, yeah. So in that regard, I would just have prophetic abilities. You know what I mean? Uh, but just not including knowledge of One Piece, but just knowing now, yeah, I would know how to edit videos better. I would know how to shoot videos better. Yeah. I'm thinking Zoro's gonna lose an eye. Pfft, Zoro's not gonna lose an eye. What? So he just goes the rest of the story without an eye? Yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, Venus is Brooke as a horse. Since he was an SBS, Brooke would be a horse if he was an animal. Yeah. I, I need to see Brooke fight Venus. I need to see Brooke fight Ethan. Even if he doesn't win, I just need to see it happen. Yeah. Tekking's going to get visited by Oda. I, you know what? At a certain point, I think something would happen where, where the fuck are you getting this information? Because the only people that have this information are Oda and the higher-ups at Shueisha, and you are predicting this exactly. So what the fuck is going on? I'd be like, I'm, I'm psychic. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I'm psychic. I don't know what to tell you. Maybe, maybe Oda changes the story because there's some YouTuber that's predicting every chapter perfectly. And just like, all right, I got to start. I, maybe I change the direction it goes. 
There was a manga with this exact premise. Was there? I don't know. <laughs> uh... Have you read Boruto? Uh, no. Afro Brook versus Bald Man Ethan. Yep. Absolutely. Ethan will look at Brook and be like, I'm jealous of your hair! Does Oda speak English? So, in... I, I, I know he speaks very little English. I know that in Japan, most of the uh, schools, like, have English as, like, like, a required course, I think. So, like, foreign language in our public school system in America, it's not required. Uh, you, it's an elective when you're in high school. When you get to college, as most colleges do require a foreign language to graduate, I had to take ASL when I was in, like, American Sign Language when I was in college. But um, in high school, you, I, we had a choice between Spanish or French, and you didn't have to if you didn't want to. Um, but I think in Japan, I think English is, like, a part of, like, you have to have at least base-level English. So maybe, maybe just, maybe basic English, and that's probably it. Yeah. I need to get back in. I, I, I would like to like do a refreshing course on my ASL, actually, because I don't remember that much. Yeah, he, he would know basic English. He would definitely know basic English. Yeah, we didn't even have the option to take a foreign language in middle school. I think the uh, the school systems should be shifted a little bit more. So maybe you could start on stuff maybe a little earlier in, like, middle school, junior high, and, like, particular tracks you want to go on. Like, if you want to be uh, – if, if you know you don't care about math and you know you're not going to have a math-based career, then outside of basic math lessons, they shouldn't keep making you take math. Even it's like, hey, look, I don't care for math. I'm not going to be an engineer. I'm not going to be a physicist. You know, give you the they'll they'll be basic math, but I don't need to take trigonometry. I don't need to take calculus. This is ridiculous. I want to focus on English, or I want to focus on history, or something like that. You know what I mean? You could, or I want to go to be like I don't know, like like something more physical. Like I'm gonna go be a football player or something like that. You know what I mean? Like maybe focus on that a little bit more early on, because you have these required courses. Like you have to take a certain number of math courses in high school, or you just can't graduate. Yeah. Guys, I think Netflix is going to make a decent live-action One Piece. <laughs> um, yeah, I think... Oh, yeah, uh, that's a really good idea. Math involving things like percentages, taxes, how to how to fill out a W-2 form, how to do all that kind of shit. We didn't learn that in high school. We, okay, the last year of high school, when I was a senior, I took accounting, but that was an elective. That wasn't even a required course. And it's a good thing I did because I learned a decent amount of shit in that accounting class. I learned how to do like accounts receivable. I learned how to fill out a check. I learned how to do a little bit of shit with taxes. Not a lot, but a little bit of stuff that I actually did need when I left. And that wasn't even, um, I disagree. People should learn basic trig. I don't know shit about basic trig. I've never used basic trig. I think a lot of other people, especially with like, we have phones now. Like, I don't need to know the circumference of a circle. I don't need to know the formula for that. And if I ever do need to calculate the circumference of a circle, we have these. All right, you know, so we're fine. Basic math, you're fine. Basic math, basic algebra, you're good. All right, you're good. You don't need to learn how to divide complex fractions. You're going to be okay. Unless you want to pursue a career in that particular, like, okay, going to be an engineer, going to be a physicist, going to be whatever. Got to do math courses. Makes sense. But if not, you don't need trig for music. Exactly. Exactly. Perfect example. Yeah. Two pi r squared. Okay, there you go. I think you could get by with Pythagoras' theorem. I don't think you need trig. No. Uh, and, well, you know what? That's what I mean also. Like, the whole thing can kind of shift where... Maybe learn more about accounting and stuff when you're in middle school. Learn more about statistics when you're in middle school and stuff like that. Yeah. And once you get to high school, basically once you get to high school, kind of more similar to college, I'm thinking. Where it's like you get to high school and you get more freedom over. There's no like, you got to take this many math courses in high school or you can't graduate. Like none of that. No standardized testing. None of that bullshit. It's more of just like, okay, pursue whichever tracks you want. You want to take a math class? Take a math class. You want to take a science? Go ahead. You want to take history? Go ahead. You know? Yeah. Do elementary uh, elementary school focus on 
Uh, really basic math stuff, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, you know, averages, medians, that kind of stuff. Um, you could probably even put some basic stuff with statistics in there. I'm not really complicated stuff, obviously, but some stuff. And then you get to middle school and you maybe learn a little bit more about algebra and then like maybe some accounting stuff and things like that. I, I, I would say in high school, an accounting course would be required because that shit is stuff you need to know, like how to do your taxes. You need to learn how to do that shit. So that stuff, sure. Yeah, but that's more about like how to fill out forms, how to use tax software. Like today, we're going to learn how to use this tax software to do your taxes. Stuff like that would be nice. Stuff like that would be nice. So maybe a few required courses in high school, but for the most part, you get to kind of, you know, fulfill your own thing. Yeah. Um, in my country, we don't have taxes. I'm trying to think which, for some reason, I'm thinking Singapore. I don't know. I don't know about taxes in general. Uh, like, I have an accountant that helps me with mine. But uh, taxes in other countries, I'm not sure. We need a power scale high school classes. I think so. Yeah. Saudi Arabia. Okay, there it is. Vatican City? Yeah, that was another one, yeah. Why why are we talking about taxes? Well, we're at we're at like the end of the stream now. It's like it's like an hour and twenty ish minutes. We've talked about the chapter at this point. Now we can end out with some other topics, yeah. Um, I think schools are going to change drastically over the next couple of years. Absolutely. Yeah, I think they are. How will AI and everything affect that? I have no idea. That is something that is not even, that wasn't even a thing when I was in high school. So I have no idea how th this is going to affect, you know, the future of like the school system and stuff. Ethan is all about taxes. Yeah, Ethan's literally the economy. He's literally the head of the economy. Is Kaku going to get left behind? Haven't seen him. I hope Kaku doesn't just get left behind in the bubble. Like, guys? Anyone? Boom, boom. I mean, York is also chained up in the room with Kaku, so it's just York. I imagine all, while all this bullshit's going on, York and Kaku are just having a conversation. I don't know what they would talk about, but they're just there having a conversation, right? It's kind of like you're in a room with somebody and there's insane shit going on outside and you can't do anything about it, so it's like, well, what do you talk about? No Kaku left behind. <laughs> the only thing certain in life is death and taxes. Literally, he is death's horse and taxes. Yes. York X Kaku. All right, sure. At the end of this, at the end of this, they go pick up. Oh, shit. We forgot about Kaku. We go in there and we pop the bubble. By the way, me and York are engaged. Like, wow. Okay. That's what you guys were doing in the meantime. All right. Everyone forgot about Jabra. Yeah, I know. He's at Marijuana right now. They are all starting to do that, at least in my district. Like, implementing AI. Like, how how exactly is AI being implemented in schools? I'm just curious on the method they would use. Like, is it like, okay, kids, let's, you know, have AI teach you a lesson, or let's pull out a laptop or a tablet or whatever. I'm going to do AI. AI, ooh, AI generated, um... AI generated worksheets, maybe that might not be a bad idea. Cause like every student learns differently. Every student focuses on different things. So like AI generated worksheets for individual students, that might not be a bad idea. Maybe for grading. Yeah, maybe for, for something like math or science where there's like formulas and physics and stuff like that. Sure. For something like an English paper, like when I did that Vinland Saga stream where I was like looking at all the, the Vinland Saga things, like having AI grade like an English paper. And I've even watched videos of that. I've watched videos of English professors at like Harvard look at papers that have been generated by AI and like, okay, this would get like a C, this would get an F, this would get an F, this would maybe get a C, you know? So it's like, you know, we did AI generated presentations. Ah, interesting. Okay. Fascinating stuff. I was on a walk with, uh, I went down to see my one friend Chris yesterday, and we were having a conversation about that. We were on a walk. And, um, yeah, it was, AI is one of those things that is just like, look, man, a lot of people are, are nervous around it and, uh, like, afraid of what it can do. Uh, but, like, 
it's one I just don't think you're putting it back in the bottle. You know, it's it's just going to be here. It's not going to be like, okay, AI is not working, guys. Everybody stop working on it. We're not doing it anymore. Like, mm, no. No, I think it's it's here to stay. Um, yeah. He actually uh, my friend brought up like, yeah, they can replicate like actors and like famous people's like voices perfectly now. And like what happens when it gets really 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 good to the point where you literally cannot tell. And I'm like, yeah, because, you know, a couple days ago, I was watching um, I was watching a video of a it was an AI video of Obama, Trump and Biden on a podcast together ranking the Nintendo systems. And it was a very entertaining video. Now, obviously, it's written out with a script. It's like the AI didn't do the whole video. Somebody typed out a script and it had the AI just use their voices and because they were presidents, uh, you know, their voices are like, there's hundreds of different speeches and shit to pull from. So their voices are exact. And it was actually a really entertaining video. I was really entertained. And just like, yeah, they're, they Trump sounds like Trump. Biden sounds like Biden. And going through the whole, like, where would you rank the N64? And be like, it's like, it was pretty good in terms of their voice patterns. And it's like, holy shit, this is, yeah, this is scary. But also like, yeah, this is getting better and better. Number one is when AI uses AI-generated materials in its references. It's AI second harvest. Yeah, people have seen that. People have been saying that AI sometimes, uh, certain AI prompts have gotten more lazy, you know, the more that they're used. Uh, and then there's the whole art copyright thing. And then so there's so much there's so much bullshit with AI right now. We're at ground zero with this right now. A lot of stuff has to be worked out and, like, copyright infringement and things like that, especially with artists. Um I don't know. I don't know what the fuck is going to happen, though. I have no idea. Are you not entertained? Yeah. I watched one of Obama and Trump playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's called Skynet. So I don't think it's going to be Skynet. I don't think it's going to be like, um, because that's, you got to remember, like, because that's like, hey, man, all I'm saying is remember what happened in the Matrix. It's like, that was a movie. All right, AI is not going to make a robot army that's going to kill the world. I just don't see that happening. Uh, that was a movie. It's, you know, fiction and whatever like that. Okay. Uh, but it's, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see where we're at. Maybe if you, like, fast forward, like, several thousand years or some shit. I don't know. But, like, yeah. The internet celebrated 35 years. Uh, yes. Well, okay. In 1989 is when the internet became public. Uh, DARPA and the military had been working on it. It was long before that, like several decades before that. Um, I think uh, like Vietnamish, maybe a little bit after that was the time when it was being utilized. But um, yeah, it became a public thing in 89. So it would have been 35 years. Yeah. I am the Dominator. There's a difference. I understand where you're coming from there. Like, drones were originally idea in movies. and Well, no, drones existed back in, like, the 80s. Like, even before that. Like, old, old school drones existed probably longer than you might think. Drones are not, like, modern. Like, dro going to a store and buying a drone now, that's something that's original. But a lot of the stuff that we use existed in the military sector before it existed in the private sector. You know what I mean? But, yeah, drones were around for, for a while there. But um, there's a difference between like, hey, man, there were drones that were in just in movies and now we have drones versus a robot army that takes over the world. There's a big difference between those things. iPads were predicted in movies. A lot of I love watching old sci fi and watching to see how they uh, predicted things like old episodes of, like the Twilight Zone and like the vid screen monitor and it's like yeah yeah vid like they had the basic idea like hey wouldn't it be cool in the future if you call somebody you could see their video you could see their their image now they didn't exactly get it perfect because it usually in the Twilight Zone it's usually like I'm gonna go over to the vid screen in the kitchen and it's like a giant it's like a giant television mounted into the wall and you have to like push actual buttons and then the vid screen turns on like they would they didn't quite understand how compact everything would be but, like, they were basically on the right idea, and I love looking at that kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the Future, perfect example. Back to the Future is, like, vid monitors, but it's still, like, shitty CRT television. Like, they didn't, like, well, HD probably not going to be a thing yet. <laughs> but, but, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Jason X predicted the iPad. You know, the iPad existed. The, the first tablet computer came out way earlier than you might think. Because everyone thinks iPad like around 2010-ish. The first iPad, I think, or the first tablet computer was introduced in like 2001. Like it was earlier than you might think. Ronald Reagan, the actor, he's president? Uh, do you think Katarina Devon and therefore Blackbeard now knows of the Void Century since she touched Saturn? Uh, it depends on if she absorbs memories. She might very well. I'm not sure if she does. Yeah. Like Elvis had a, a cell phone. It was a giant clunky thing that was like you had to carry it around in a fucking thing. But I mean, they had they had cell phones in Vietnam. They had like comms and stuff that you had to carry around in giant backpacks. But they existed, very very Doctor Stone esque. But they existed in the sixties. Yeah, pre pre tablets. Yeah, even in the nineties, you had Palm Pilots. Oh, I remember Palm Pilots. I remember my friend had one of those in, like, the school bus in, like, 2000. And I was like, oh, my God, it's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> remember this failure? Microsoft's coffee table. I don't remember that. Microsoft Surface coffee table. They made a tablet coffee table. Why? I mean, I gotta be honest with you. It looks cool, but coffee tables, you're not going to be putting drinks on this thing. Like, I don't think this is the exact one because this is Windows 10, but, huh. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, it looks cool. I want that. I mean, I kind of do too, but I'm not going to put, like, I'm not going to put a coffee on there. Or, like, my coffee table is actually really cool. It actually has this, uh, it can actually, like, extend part of, like, the top of it. So I actually, like, eat a lot of my meals on my coffee table. I can, like, pull my coffee table to my couch, and I can kind of just, whoop, move it up, and then I can have a little tray to eat my food and just put it back down. My coffee table's a transformer. Uh, you can put plexiglass on that. Yeah! You, I mean, I'm sure it has some kind of layer of protection so it doesn't just immediately break if you spill something on it, but yeah. I remember the hyperscan. I remember an episode of uh, Angry Video Game Nerd that focused on the hyperscan, yeah. Who am I going to use this thing? Yeah. Where are we at with the stream? We're, we're kind of at the end now, just bullshitting about anything. How many Straw Hats post-time skip Fishman Island can beat Luchi pre-time skip? Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, Jinbei. Okay, so those four can all beat Luchi pre-time skip, obviously. Frankie could do it. Brooke could probably do it. Chopper could do it. The only ones that I think might have trouble are Usopp and Nami. Jinbei could do it. I think Robin could do it with Demonio. Uh... Yeah, I think it's only I think maybe Usopp and Nami might be the only ones that might have some trouble. They might lose. You're making contact with the Avengers with that coffee table. The Avengers is 12 years old. The first Avengers movie is 12 years old. 12 years old. Since the Avengers. 12 years. A decade plus 2 years. 2 times 6. Six times two. Twelve years. Yeah. <laughs> I think Nami has a good chance with Zeus. Oh, that's right. I didn't account for Zeus. Zeus is... She does have a sentient actual climb attack now. So even if, like, she gets it knocked out of her hand, it could come right back to her. That is true. If you give Usopp enough prep time, he could beat Luchi. And I think if... Pre-time skip Luchi. And I think if Nami was Zeus... Maybe a little bit more rough, but um, she has a good shot, too. Those would be the two that I would be, like, not immediately bet money on, though. I was in high school 12 years ago. I was in college 12 years ago. Yeah. 
Usopp with prep time and a C prism chainsaw could pretty much beat anybody. Uh, is Zeus... Oh, yeah, Zeus is still there. Zeus is still there. I guess the idea is even if Big Mom dies... I, I don't think Big Mom's dead, but even if she dies, maybe the Zeus might stick around. Because it's like a fragment of her soul. It's like a horcrux. Usopp is Batman. His mindset is just, eh. yeah, Lucci's never been one of the more interesting characters in, in One Piece. Definitely not. Dude, his, his backstory was mentioned in the manga. It wasn't actually shown. In the anime, they showed it. When he went to that island and there was all the, there was like a bunch of pirates that were uh, using a bunch of citizens as a ransom. Like, you know, you better start giving us some barrier. We're going to start shooting these hostages. And then Lucci just went in at, at age 13 and just killed everybody. Killed all the hostages, killed all the pirates. You know, that was the whole idea behind Luchi. We didn't even see it in the manga. Yeah. He's a serial killer. Yeah, but once again, we don't have to redeem him, but it would be interesting to learn more about him. Yeah. How did he join Cypherpool? Was he an orphan? How did he meet Hattori? There you go. It is canon. Oh, no, no. It's canon. It's just it wasn't shown in the manga. It was only mentioned in the manga. You didn't actually see it go down in the manga. They they added it in the anime. Yeah. Do you like thunderstorms? I love thunderstorms. I love it when it's raining. Uh, it knocked down part of my fence the other night because we had a really bad windstorm. But aside from that, I love the actual sound of it. Yeah, I could fall asleep to a thunderstorm very easily. See, sympathetic villains are just lame. I'm, I'm not saying sympathetic. See, that's the difference. This is These are things that are very closely tied together. Learning about a serial killer does not make you sympathetic for the serial killer. It's just, oh, I, I know more about this person now. I learn, no, I learn more about this character. Okay. Doesn't make them sympathetic. It's just, like, I know why they're doing this. I am not sympathetic for Orochi. Fuck Orochi. But I learn, I like to know, like, okay... Why is he like this? What series of events led to, I am Lord Orochi, I want to burn Wano down. You know, I want to learn that. Because they have a story. They all have a story. You know? It's how it goes, man. I want to learn that shit. Yeah, now Lucci, that's what I mean, though. Lucci's things is not really deep. It isn't deep. Lucci's thing really is, as you said, Max, it's just like, I just love killing. Like, that basically is Lucci's character. Yeah. Yeah, understanding is not the same thing as sympathy. How many of you have watched uh, serial killer documentaries? You know, I watched one on Jeffrey Dahmer not too long ago. Okay, does that mean like, and I'm kind of sympathetic with this character? Like, no, it's like, all right. I, I, you know, it's like, you know, serial killer documentaries and shit. It's like, I'm going to learn what, what series of events leads to Jeffrey fucking Dahmer. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. So it, it's, it's kind of like that, you know? As long as the villain has developed, I'm down. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I like that more than just generic, like, I am evil. Time to kill. That could sometimes work, but... When all of your villains are just that, no. You've kind of lost me. Rustage, yeah. It was a documentary on Jeffrey Dahmer featuring Rustage. Yes. Yeah. You watched a documentary on Rustage. Oh, uh, yeah. Not understanding serial killers is how we get more serial killers. That's kind of the whole point. There is, I, I am sure, there is a whole um, section of, like, psychology where, like, if you want to go into, like, you know, being a therapist or a psychologist or something like that, I'm sure there is a whole specific class probably learning about the psycho, the psychosis of a serial killer, you know? Because that's the kind of shit, like, red flags you kind of need to pay attention to. What matchups between Straw Hats and Blackbeard pose the biggest diff? Um, oh, I, I think Oda's going to really try his best to not make it a huge, like, oh, this is a one-sided fight. They're all going to be tough fights. I can't really think of... 
I can't really think of anybody right now that's going to be like get one shot by Blackbeard or not. Maybe not one shot, but like get owned by Blackbeard's crew or the Strides are going to own them. You know, it's going to be very even both ways. Otherwise, what's, it's going to just not be an interesting fight. Yeah. Yeah, it's called criminal psychology or psychopathy. There you go. Psychopathy. That was the word I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Animal abuse is always a red flag. Here's the psychosis, the psychosis of a serial killer. They are crazy. That's what people used to say for a long time. They are crazy. I mean, like, there's something going on there, but you have to look. There's, there's more to it than just crazy. That's a broad term. If you're just saying, like, yeah, serial killers, they're just a bunch of crazy monsters. Nothing, nothing more to learn. I'm like, no, no, there's a lot more to learn. <laughs> Why? Van Auger. No, I don't even think Van Auger against Usopp. I think Usopp is going to be a good match for Van Auger when we finally get to that point. Yeah. Hancock was a red flag. Yeah, she does kick puppies a lot. And baby seals. Yeah, how and why crazy. Yeah, you just don't say, like, like honestly, that's the way people operated for a long time. If there was somebody that was acting uh, not n normal, to use a thing, if there was somebody out there acting a little bit off their rocker, back in the day, it was grab that person and chuck them in an insane asylum and... You know, especially in the later, in the uh, late 19th century, early 20th century, we have all these fucked up things like doctors using, like, oh, we're just going to lobotomize, you know, shock therapy, all this crazy unethical bullshit going on. And it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, this is, this is better that we're not just classifying people as crazy and throwing them in torture dungeons to get them out of society. Okay. Yeah. Which, which, which. Read up about the guy that uh, invented Kellogg's, like the the cornflake. That's a that's a story for another day. Um, yeah, dude, there's stories about women that are on their periods and are suffering from like you know just being on their period and like ah oh, time to lock her up in the insane asylum. It's like, yeah, or women that had postpartum depression. Lock her up in the insane asylum. People that came back from the war, because for a long time, PTSD wasn't properly understood. It was shell shock. And sometimes if people came back and they were fucked up from being in a war, off to the insane asylum with you. Just going to chuck you into a place and throw you in a shitty bed and just, there you go. Get you out of society. We don't want you here. We're just going to throw you in. We're just going to shove you under the rug. You're acting a little weird, you know? Yeah, so there's, there's, we've come a long way with mental health care. We could be a lot better, but we're doing a lot better than what we were a hundred years ago. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we're, we're starting to get more off on the rails here. So I think we're going to be ending this here. I'm going to, I'm going to go through the, uh, the, uh, super chats. See what we got in there. Um, what matchups? I just answered that one. Okay. Uh, I've been thinking about this since the new cover story, since Yonko are under Wano, will they find the old Wano? Uh, yeah, Yamato's cover story might actually lead to Kaido Big Mom. Like, it could. Like, that could be the finale of that. It, like, or it could be included. So we gotta pay attention to that. How many Straw Hats post-time skip can beat the... I, I answered that one already. Okay, here's one. Are you disappointed that Laws and Kids got destroyed after Wano after all the hype they gave us during the fight? Also, prediction for Law and Kid. With the case of Law, he was kind of ambushed by Blackbeard. And in that case, I just don't think he had a shot. His crew overall, while not weak, are not on the level to take care of Blackbeard. Kid could have avoided that 100%. That was, the ball was in his court to avoid that. And he chose to like, fuck it, let's go. And even Killer's like, are you sure? Yeah. And then he just got decimated, right? So, you know, don't take on two Yonko and then take on another Yonko and be like, I'm on a roll. Like, you think you should have probably taken a break, kid? Yeah. Uh, hey, Tekken, you're going to play Dragon Dogma 2. I didn't even know that was a thing. So probably not, but maybe. I just finished Persona 3, so I'm going to probably look for something else here in a second. Uh, Kaku, I answered that. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Uh, I disagree. People should learn basic trig. I, I just don't think you need trig um, in, in your everyday life. You know what I mean? Anything that comes up where you might need trig or anything like that, I mean, you got phones, you got apps. We're, we're fine, you know? 
Um, if you have anything, anything involving math, obviously, if you're, uh, like I said, if you're an engineer, well, if you're an engineer, you would have had to take trig. I mean, like, like, that's the thing. You would have had to take more advanced math courses if you were doing anything relating to math or physics or anything, even chemistry or science in that regard. But if you're like a music major, you don't need to learn about trig. You know, you don't need it in your everyday life. Um, have you read Sakamoto Days? Yes. And I always say Sakamoto Days. I don't know why, but I just do. Sakamoto Days. In a recent chapter, a, ch a character literally says he wants to quit being an assassin and start a crepe shop. Yeah, bakery! Everybody just needs to start a bakery. Did you hear about Dollar Tree shutting down? Um, no. <laughs> is 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 the Dollar Twenty Five hike finally enough for him? Hold on, let me check. Dollar Tree shutting down. They might just be downsizing. Yeah, they're downsizing. They're 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 um. Oh, okay. I know what happened. Ah, that finally came back to bite him in the ass, didn't it? Okay. They they purchased Family Dollar. Dollar Tree, the corporation, purchased Family Dollar, which is a rival dollar store. This happened when I was working there. This happened back in 2014. And uh, they turned all the Family Dollars into Dollar Trees. I've actually seen some Dollar Tree Family Dollar hybrids. Like they have this, like a, like a split sign, like Family Dollar, Dollar Tree. Same kind of store, though. And uh, they're they're closing a shitload of them now, but probably because it's like you know they had to up their prices because of the inflation thing. So they're dollar twenty five store now. So I'm like, yeah, that uh, that came back to bite them in the ass doing that. All right, all right. Well, there you go. That came full circle. Interesting. I did not know that. Well, now I do. Um, teching for next Pirate King after Luffy. Sure. And uh, that's the uh, yeah. I read all of these ones already. Yeah. It's an Alaskan bullworm. Would you want to be in One Piece episode as a side character? Sure. Absolutely. Like animated into an episode? Absolutely. What OP character would you want a One Piece shot of? A one shot a one shot of One Piece. I was like, what what are you talking about? What One Piece character would you want a one shot of? Ah. Uh, I mean, if I if I can only pick one and I had to pick one, it would be Robin. Like a whole chapter just about Robin. Yeah. I would go I would do that 100%, yeah. Um do you think Luffy could be defeated, could have defeated Blackbeard pre-time skip before he got the Tremor Tremor Fruit? No. Because I think Luffy would have been, he would have had the Dark Fruit and that would have negated the power. If it was just Blackbeard versus Luffy pre-time skip, I'm fairly certain Blackbeard would have won. Sakamoto Days! I don't know why I say it like that, I just do. Sounds cool though. Sakamoto Days. <laughs> Alright. Well anyway, this was a fun conversation. Um, is the, oh yeah, the Dollar Tree I was at, that, that's still working. That was always a Dollar Tree. That was never a family dollar. That was always a Dollar Tree. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think I'm gonna get going. I'm gonna have some lunch, uh, fun stream, talked about One Piece chapter, and then taxes, and then the school system, and then math, and then serial killers, psychopathy, and then, uh, 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 insane asylums in the early 20th century. So yeah, we, we've learned a lot today. We've learned a lot today, ladies and gentlemen. And remember, learning more about a villain does not mean they're sympathetic. It just means you've understood them a little more. There we go. Cool story, bro. Have a great night, everybody. This will be Teching signing out. I'll be making a video tomorrow about the Garo Say. We'll, we'll go more into that then. All right, later all, thank you for the stream. Happy St. Paddy's Day.